Roland Corporation was founded in Japan almost 50 years ago by Ikutaro Kakeyashi. They manufactured various musical instruments, but unlike their competition, their primary focus was on amateurs and enthusiasts. Kakehashi also wanted to target foreign customers, and that's why he chose Roland as a name for the company. As the company grew, they quickly became popular between amateurs and professional musicians all over the world. Roland was the ultimate company that probably influenced the world of electronic music most of all. Their first ever product was a drum machine called the Rhythm 77. Even though it was Roland's first product, it was in fact an updated version of Rhythm Maze, made by Kakehashi's first company, Ace Electronic. I won't and I can't name every single product they ever manufactured, that would take forever, but I'll mention most important ones and also their most important achievements. One year later, after Rhythm introduction, Roland released their first synthesizer, which was also the first compact synthesizer produced in Japan, SH-1000. Even Vangelis used one. It's good we live in an age where you can find everything on the internet, because I wanted to hear how this synthesizer sounds. This is it. They released many iconic synthesizers like System 100, a semi-modular monophonic synth. Jupiter 4, Roland's first polyphonic synth. Then Jupiter 8 followed, and then Jupiter 6, which was the first MIDI instrument. Although it was cheaper than its bigger brother, it had more features, including MIDI of course, which made it practically a successor. And that brings me to Roland's most remarkable achievement. Roland created a ton of different and iconic electronic musical instruments, but the most significant achievement they've done for the music industry was the development of MIDI standard. They created MIDI in cooperation with Yamaha, Korg and Sequential Circuit. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's essentially a communication protocol that allows to connect various electronic musical instruments, computers and many audio devices to play, edit and record music. It helped users and musicians to work with different equipment from different manufacturers at the same time. On since this channel is mostly about games, I'm mostly interested in the MIDI standard in the game industry. MIDI had a great impact on music and games, but let's start from the beginning. First computers supporting MIDI were NEC's PC-88 on PC-98 with Roland's own famous MPU-401 interface card. On take a guess who pioneered MIDI on IBM PC. Right, Roland with the same MPU-401 interface. When I was a little brat, I used to play lots of DOS games on setting up the sound card was necessary. Setup usually contained item in the menu that said General MIDI or MPU-401 compatible. At that time, I didn't know what that means or what MPU-401 is for that matter. I just knew I had to select this option to make it work sometimes. I found out much later that it's not actually a sound card, but rather an interface used in IBM PC for connecting various MIDI devices. MPU-401 was sold as an external box unit with MIDI connectors onto an internal 8-bit ISA interface card. They later shrunk down the unit and put most of the electronics on the interface card. And finally, they got rid of the external box completely and used only the interface card itself. MPU-401 AT was a version for ABM PC. Famous MT-32 was released in 1987. Roland targeted amateur musicians with this cheap module. Even though it was packed with features similar to a professional synthesizer module, its rather poor sound quality certainly wasn't embraced by professionals. It, however, found its way to home computer game market and quickly became standard in PC game music. It was something unheard of in PC games. And even today, it still has its charm. Game music started to attract more and more attention, so Roland released CM32L two years later. CM stands for Computer Music. 
CM32 was essentially MT32 with added samples in its wave banks and a different chassis. Since it was marketed as a gaming module, it was a simple design and didn't need an LCD screen and so many buttons. They kept there just power button and volume knob. It was an ugly thing compared to MT32. A bit cheaper and more practical solution was this, Roland's LAPCI sound card. It was basically CM32L combined with MPU-401 on one full-length 8-bit ISA card. You didn't need an external box to get the music out of your PC anymore. The only downside was, it couldn't handle PCM, it was MIDI-only sound card. So you still needed another sound card that could handle digital audio. MIDI standard cleared out some of the mess between manufacturers. It allowed to connect products from different manufacturers easily, but in terms of playing back the same MIDI music on different devices, was still a mess. Less mess, but the mess nonetheless. And that's where General MIDI extension comes into play. It ensures that General MIDI compatible devices meet certain requirements and thus sound the same while playing back MIDI files. For example, it must support a minimum of 128 MIDI instruments and 47 percussion sounds. Specific instruments must be mapped to the specific program numbers. So when MIDI file requests to play, let's say, violin, it will play violin and not sax or piano. Also, it must support at least 16 simultaneous channels, where each channel must be able to play different instrument. Even though MT32 was a great machine and impacted musicians and gamers all over the world, Sound Canvas SC55 was perhaps the most iconic and most used module in Roland history. It was released in 1991 and was the first general MIDI compatible module. SC55 was used by many famous musicians to compose music for those games. Take for example Doom or Rise of the Triad. Bobby Prince used SC55 to compose music for these games. That's why SC55 is considered the best possible sound device to play or listen Doom on. And again, if you didn't want an external box, there was an 8-bit ISA card with SC55 sound set and integrated MPU-401 unit. Roland SCC1. Unfortunately, as in LAPCI case, it doesn't support digital audio playback, so you still need another sound card for gaming. Worth mentioning is also Sound Canvas SC7 on RAP10, which stands for Roland Audio Production. SC7 was very similar to SC55 on the inside. The biggest difference was a possibility to connect to PC or Mac also with a standard serial port. RAP10 was an ISA high-end sound card, which at last supported 16-bit digital audio and of course general MIDI. It was essentially SC7 with digital audio. And since it was meant to be a sound card used in audio production, it had very limited support in games. Since then, Roland manufactured many different sound canvas devices and daughterboards, even a PCMCIA card for laptop computers. Last of the sound canvas line was a CD70. It contained practically all previous sound canvases in one small package. User could switch between different canvas versions. The only problem was, you couldn't do it with hardware buttons, you needed a software capable of switching between the modes. Using default bang, it was practically SC8820, but unlike SC8820 that had resolution of 32kHz, SCD70 was able to go up to 48kHz. It also featured optical and digital output, so it was far superior in terms of sound quality. You could also connect it to the computer via USB port, and that is working fine even today in 64-bit Windows 10. Unlike other sound canvas devices, it supports digital audio playback, so it can be used as a full-featured sound card, and damn good one at that. And that was the last of the great modules created to enjoy not only games, but also a music created by exceptional composers. Roland released many synthesizers, keyboards, guitars, and all sorts of musical instruments, but they left the game industry and that's what I was interested in. MIDI in games wasn't needed anymore. Hardware was powerful enough to handle MP3s, hard drives were big enough to contain MP3s, and that's what everyone used as a music format in the end. Roland was one of the companies that shaped the world of electronic music. They created most iconic devices for professional musicians, enthusiasts, and gamers alike. After the game music industry moved away from MIDI format, Roland moved on, focused on the rest of the market again and left the game music to MP3s. And that's all I've got for you today. 
Roland is still alive and kicking, and I hope you all are too. Leave the comment and see you next time.